In today's video, we're going to discover how to probe the G-spot. Are you even allowed to do that on YouTube? Aaron's gonna probe what? On camera? I, I heard that spot was a myth. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I can understand how the title of this video may be misconstrued, but if we can just get our minds out of the gutter for a moment, uh, what I'm talking about is probing the work location, the work offset commonly referred to as the G54. Now an authentic base controller, work offsets commonly range from G54 all the way up to G59. However, if you require more offsets than that, you can go higher to G154 and select P1 through to P99. You can do that on the Haas and you can pretty much do that on my LNC controller as well. So some of these uh, probes that I'm gonna be showing you today uh, start off from the very basic, from the very cheap, all the way up to the high end. So what I'm talking about is the little wobbler, the optical edge finding probe here, such as the Vertex. Um, we're also going to be looking at the, um, the Hema 3D Taster. And of course, I'll also put in some footage of using the Renishaw probing system on the Haas at, uh, at the college where I usually work. Now, one good thing about the little wobbler edge finder is that it's quite cheap um, and it will work on any material. Now, when I say that, it, the material doesn't have to be conductive for it to work. You can actually put non-conductive material in there, such as plastics or timber, and your wobbler will work on that. Now, the wobbler is really good for X and Y location, but it's not the best to find the Z height. You can do it with the Z height, However, that requires a piece of paper, a little bit of fine tuning to get down there, okay? And of course, you'll have to worry about your paper thickness. Now, my little wobbler cost me about $12 uh, from my local tool vendor from Aussie Tools uh, down here in Melbourne. Um, now, it's not that accurate. It will get you going, it will get you, um, get you started. Uh, how, however, for accuracy, yeah, I think there's better probes than that as well. Um, you can also see the diameter here that is not, even though they state it's 10 millimeters, it's actually a little bit oversized. Now the next probe I'd like to show you is the Vertex probe. Now the Vertex probe, I have two of these um, optical edge finders. I have a cheaper variety one, which I'll show you here, and a good Vertex one. Now they're pretty much a, a, a clone copy of one another. Uh, however, I do tend to like the Vertex one better over the cheaper one that I bought off e eBay. Now, when you, when you purchase your edge finder, they stipulate that the ball is actually 10 mil, but this one here is a little bit oversized as well. Okay, so at the end of the day, the, what, the money you pay really dictates the quality that you get. You'll notice in this little video clip here, you can see the run out that I'm getting, the deviation that this ball is is, you know, is not perfect in its concentricity. So the ball's probably perfect, but where it seats on, this, on the seat here is probably not sitting that well. Now, one thing I do like over the Vertex style uh, probe that I've got, it's got a really loud beeper. Now, as you get older, uh, no doubt, if you're good, you don't lose hearing, but I'm starting to lose my hearing as I get older. And a lot of my hearing loss has got to do with industrial deafness over time, you know, back in the 80s, not wearing PPE, that sort of thing. If you listen here on camera, guys, you'll be able to hear this beeper. It's a nice, bright LED and uh, quite loud. Okay, if I open my other style of edge finder here, my optical edge finder, the cheaper one, um, I've put a battery in, a couple of batteries in that, you can hear it. Now, believe it or not, I can't hear that beeping. Um, I think it is beeping. I've had uh, my wife said, what's that beeping sound? I said, what beeping sound? So maybe it's at a tone that I can't hear anymore. I'll bring it a bit closer to the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that on camera. Oh, I can't hear anything. I think the beep is dead. Uh, coolant does wreck these guys, so I advise that you don't leave it in the spindle, okay? Now, one of the, another little finder that I bought that I wanted to show to you today, but I couldn't because the holder that I bought uh, from a tool vendor here in Brisbane uh, won't fit it. Now, I just explicitly stated to him that I'd like to be able to use this to sweep it in a bore to check, a, uh, to make sure that I can clock in a bore and get it spot on. 
Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. The arm they sent me doesn't match this. So I'm a little bit disappointed with that vendor, but I won't mention that on camera. So that would have been great anyway. But, so with a, with a part like this, with a finger gauge, finger dial like that, it's quite easy to get down here and probe your ball and to pick up your work coordinate, the X and Y and that as well, guys. But look, you can do that with an edge fighter and your digital controller, pretty much just as easy as well. Moving along is the piece de resistance, is the Hamer. The Hamer, I've just got it, I'm in love. It is fantastic. Um, I need to buy a spare tip because I know I'm gonna break this tip. Uh, let's flash over to Mike and see what he has to say about it. Evidence of unsafe probing practices. Protect your probe, boys and girls, or this could happen to you. Now, with the Hamer, guys, uh, you'll notice that when I measure these uh, indicators, the Hamer, it stipulates the ball is 4mm, and you, would you believe when I put a micrometer across it, it is spot on 4mm. It is that accurate. All the other ones here, um, not this one, of course, the optical edge finders and the old wobbler are not exactly what they state they are. They're either undersized or oversized. Uh, the Hamer is absolutely fantastic, and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it even more and more and more. Okay, let's take a look at the Renishaw probing system, which has been installed on our Haas Super Mini Mill 2 at the college. Now, it's a big ticket item, guys. As I started off from here from cheap to more expensive, okay? Just to go over that again, the little wobbler was about 12 Australian dollars. So in US dollars, I think that's about 10 cents. Uh, that's a joke. <laughs> um, I'm unsure of the vertex. This was donated uh, by one of my subscribers. So what I'll do, I'll put the price down here now when I Google it to find out exactly the cost of it. This little dial gauge cost me about a hundred, roughly hundred dollars Australian, I think, from memory. Um, now the Hamer, it was quite steep. Now, depending which vendor you use, uh, prices vary. So the vendor I used in Brisbane, I paid about eight hundred dollars for that. Now I have known people to get them as cheap as four hundred dollars off Amazon. Um, unfortunately, here in Australia, we do have Amazon, but it's really only been in operation for about the last six months to a year, so. Prices are still a little bit high on Amazon as opposed to eBay. Now the Renishaw probing system, uh, expect to pay with the Haas machine guys. Uh, when you buy it, usually you buy it from the dealer. So no doubt they'd put their surcharge on it as well. I believe the Renishaw probing system cost us about 10,000 Australian dollars. Now that was for the, for the probe, for the spindle probe and also for the table probe. Now there are Chinese companies such as Pioneer, uh, coming out and some of the sole guys are, are buying those and they, they're quite a, a good alternative. Um, I'm just unsure about their macros. I don't have one. Uh, when you buy Renishaw guys, it, it will come with the macros to be installed straight into the controller. And, uh, you, you know, like I said, it's all about quality and, you know, having that service and backup support as well. So you need to think about that when you're buying some probing. So anyway, that pretty much brings our video to conclusion here today. I really appreciate your time for following along. I had lots of fun making this, especially collaborating with uh, Mike from Blue Hands Videos and Kevin from Mechanical Advantage. So thanks guys for joining in. It's all in uh, good spirits and a bit of fun, okay? So uh, remember, click that subscribe button, click that bell, click like, and uh, yeah, by all means, leave a comment or a suggestion down below. Thank you. Until the next video, keep spitting bits and ripping chips. See you later. Okay, Aaron. I'm ready to start your probing video. If you wanted sexual innuendos related to probing, you came to the right guy. If he finds the right spot, that machine's going to have one happy vice. I'd rather have Luke show me. I'll bet Luke's is bigger than Aaron's. Mm -hmm.